Hi everyone. So in today's video, I'll be sharing some fun fall things I've been doing recently. Uh, this will range anything from working here in the kitchen to doing a little bit of decorating and even a fall car cruise that we went on the other day. I thought some of you might enjoy that. So join me as I go about doing some of these things and enjoy. First thing I'll be doing here is making apple dumplings. And what is better, especially during the fall time, than a hot apple dumpling with ice cream? I do make these throughout the year randomly sometimes, but to me, I think fall apples are just sweeter and just better than throughout the rest of the year. So it's a good time right now to make them. I always start out by making my dough first, so that's what I'm doing here. So the recipe I'm using makes six dumplings and I actually just use half an apple per dumpling. My actual recipe calls for a full apple but um, in the past I've learned we like them better if it's just a little less apple I guess per bite. And here I'm just dividing my dough into six different balls. That way I have the equal amount of dough per dumpling. Before wrapping the dough around the apple halves, I like to put a little bit of sugar, in this case I'm using coconut palm sugar, and a pinch of cinnamon in the cavity of the apple. I think it really adds flavor. For some reason my dough turned out a little bit dry today. I think if I would have added just a little bit more milk, it would have helped. Normally it doesn't break apart like this, but I think it will work. I always like to make my dumpling sauce separate. Like I don't put it, like pour it over the dumplings when I bake them. I know some people do, but I like the crust to be crispy and not soaked. So here I'm just adding some water, butter, sugar and cinnamon into a saucepan, boiling that. And to thicken it, I'm using permaflow. You could, of course, you know, use cornstarch or another thickening agent. I want to add just a bit of fall color in the living room. I realize we're almost in the Christmas decorating season, but I love decorating for fall and I feel like this year I really missed out on it. I was to the thrift store the other day and came across a bed sheet of all things that was that perfect fall color I was looking for, kind of butterscotch, orangish, 
um, just a nice neutral color. And I didn't want to, of course, go spend a lot of money on pillow covers, so I was really impressed to get this sheet for $2.50. I've showed this before in my videos, but not recently, how I go about to make a very simple pillow cover with an envelope back opening. So that's what I plan to do here. To make a pillow cover, I always measure my inserts and then cut my fabric that exact measurement. That way, by the time my seam is in there, the cover will actually be just a little bit smaller than the insert. Um, that makes for a nicer, puffier pillow. So in this case, I have 20 inch inserts, so I'll cut my square, my front square, 20 by 20. So as you can see, I'm taking somewhat of a lazy route here. Instead of cutting my fabric, I'm able to tear it. Sometimes you can do that, and sometimes it'll go crooked for you. I'll probably cut my back two pieces around maybe 13 or 14 inches. You have to allow to have a nice overlap on these envelope back pillows, that way it doesn't stand open and you see your insert. I'm planning on using my trusty Bernina sewing machine that one of you guys actually gifted me with. I'll never forget that. Um, a couple of years ago, I had taken my old beaten up sewing machine into Chestnut Ridge Sewing. Um, that's a local sewing machine store. And I had taken it in to be fixed. And lo and behold, by the time I went to pick it up, someone had left a brand new Bernina there for me. Um, I think I actually cried a bit. I just couldn't believe it. I felt so unworthy, but yet I wanted to accept the gift and I have just loved this machine. I never did get a name of the person that did this, but thank you again. I'm still overjoyed with it. First thing I wanna do is hem my four back pieces. So what you want to do in this step is basically turn your right sides of your fabric facing each other. Uh, in this case, you know, the front doesn't matter, it's the same on both sides. But for my back, I want the seam to be inside, like where the hem is. I just want my thread showing on the outside, so this is actually the good side here, or the, the right side. So I'll turn that down. The other piece goes on like this, and as you can see, we have a nice three to four inch overlap here. A few things to mention here, I'm being rather lazy as I go about making these covers. First of all, my thread is black that's on the machine. I should definitely change that, make so it's more the color of the cover. But being this is just for myself, it's not gonna bother me. You know, it'll be in the back, these seams. And secondly, I would normally serge around the edges of a pillow cover if this was for the Etsy shop or for someone else. But I'm gonna take the easy route and just use my pinking shears and cut along the edges. That does help some to keep it from fraying, but it's definitely not as good as a serger would be. But again, just for myself, I think this will work. I want to try something different for the fall season and possibly into winter, uh, making my own homemade potpourri. I had looked up some recipes online and it looks fairly simple. I stopped in at German Village this morning, got some fruit and a few other ingredients that I need. I really wanted pears too, but they were out. So I'll just go with apples and lemons and limes and oranges. Here I'm lining my pans with parchment paper, uh, getting those ready. Cutting up the fruit to around an eighth to a fourth inch thick. I see I'm probably gonna run out of space in my oven to dry these. So I'm gonna 
crowd them pretty close together. I think usually you're supposed to just do a single layer, but I know everything's gonna shrink. So maybe once everything has shrunk a bit, I can push it together. I even ended up putting some apple slices on the racks of the oven. I'll probably have them in here around maybe six to eight hours at 170 degrees. I'm loving how this fruit looks since it's been dried. Definitely you know, shrunk and got darker in color, but I think it's really pretty. Now I'm ready to add a few drops of essential oils. I have some lemon. Uh, this is what we use to make soap with. That's why it's in a large container. And then I also have an orange and a cinnamon. Plan to add a few drops of each. I gathered some things from the outside that I want to use, including this pretty grass and also some leaves. And of course the branch I wanted was out of my reach above Kenny's car here. Uh, you can see the bright orange red leaves, so pretty. And John kindly helped me get them. I gotta say I'm loving our fall candles this year. This pretty amber jar is so fitting to the season. I also like the clear ones, but today I chose this one for the coffee table. Um, it's an autumn leaves candle. It smells so good. It smells exactly like you'd think autumn would smell. Again, being the apples are extra good in the fall time, I like to try and make apple butter. Here I'm just peeling and coring some yellow delicious apples. I plan to put them in this kettle, um, add some ingredients, and simmer it on the stove for a couple of hours. It always makes your house smell really good while doing this. Uh, very fitting for the fall season. I've mentioned this before, but I plan to bake uh, little mini loaves of bread and fix some preserves for my guests at the cottages. I thought I'd try and do seasonal, you know, jams and jellies, and in this case, apple butter. Earlier today, I had baked the bread. I didn't get a video of it. Um, did manage to get a clip of me taking it out of the oven. In case you missed the video last week, did you know that our cottages are live on Airbnb this morning, 9 o'clock Eastern Standard Time? 
I can't believe it. We're so excited. We're a little bit nervous, but we can't wait to see what happens. Popcorn is something we don't eat a lot of, but sometimes in the fall I get this urge for ladyfinger popcorn. To me, that's always the best kind, and it's always best made with an old-fashioned popper like this. I've just added a little butter and olive oil. And to have a sweet and salty blend, it's so good with candy corn. I know it sounds odd, but try it guys, it's actually pretty good. I never got around to fixing up our mantle for fall, and my niece, Emily, had such a pretty mantle this year, and I checked with her to see if she'd be okay with it, if I'd show her mantle and her other little cozy space beside there here on my channel, and she was, of course, okay with it. And it's so cool, she just used her old sign she had, it's actually one that we had made, flipped it over and used the brown part, like the backing of plywood, and I got MB actually to add the decal. And I just thought it made such a pretty color combination. I never would have thought of using brown. How pretty does that look against the brick? I had to put that in there. I thought it was kind of funny. Sorry, Emily. ended up using those pretty leaves on the table. They just make such a statement when you walk into the kitchen. I decided to burn a pumpkin souffle candle out here and gotta say this one combined with the autumn leaves in the living room and then the apple butter on the stove today, all those scents combined it just smells so good in here. I decided to once again use my corn husk wreath. Um, it's one I made a number of years ago and I did a video on it here several years ago. I'll try to link it down below in the description box in case you want to check it out. We had a beautiful Sunday afternoon recently, just that perfect fall day, and decided to take the cars out. You know, you probably won't get many chances like this, uh, you know, this year at least. Um, had such a fun cruise. It's definitely one of our favorite things to do. We all kind of have the interest in old classics like this. to get really good video footage of this but uh, hopefully you can tell just the beautiful scenery we were able to experience and then of course uh, if I am driving in an old car I'm always thinking you know what memories this car would have or what stories it could tell and I just kind of go back in time and it's just so much fun. screen as I show each of the cars if I can get them kind of separately um, tell you guys what's under the hood because I know some of you want to know right
hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching. I hope your fall season is going great for you. Um, it's beautiful here in Ohio. Right now is probably the prime time, like the leaves are changing and our weather is so beautiful in the fall time usually. And if you've never been in Holmes County, Ohio, consider coming to visit. Uh, it's worth it to see. I'm always so thankful for our different seasons we have here. And again, in case you missed last week's video, our cottages are up and running. I have a link down below in the description box of the Airbnb link where you can go if you want to book. This is so exciting for us. We've waited so long for this step to actually have people there. Can't wait. As always, I hope your day is going great. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.